Welcome to Blade HQ, everybody. Today is April 22nd, 2024, and today we have a ton of new knives. It has been a busy, busy week at Blade HQ, and we got a, fun of cool, a ton of cool stuff. But before we get into that, this week is a special week because it is our spring cleaning sale. We are cleaning out our inventory so that we can bring in all the coolest, newest stuff. Be very excited about that. And it is going to include some serious sales all throughout the week. And this today, we have the first Dessert Warrior sale. This is the Bowie Blades. I believe all three sizes of these are on sale. So if you've had your eye on a Dessert Warrior but wanted to pick it up at a deal, today's the day. So go pick these up at Blade HQ and make sure you're following our email list and social media because there's going to be big kind of mind-blowing sales coming out this week. I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about too many of them, but trust me, you're going to want to see some of these. Anyway, without further ado, let's talk about some new knives. Starting with the brand new Chavez Knives Scapegoat Street. So we've seen the scapegoat before, and it's been a good few years since we saw it, but it's back, and it's better than ever. I'm loving this blade. It's a nice, thick M390, and I love the satin finishes they do. And one thing I will say of Ramon Chavez knives is a lot of them will have a compound grind, like on the Tontos and the drop points, which is great. I love a compound grind, but some people like a consistent edge thickness, and they're getting it here on the scapegoat. A very neutral handle as well, very comfortable, choke up into the choil. This is, this is one of the most usable Chavez knives, in my opinion. And then we have that super cool Ramon Chavez signature skull clip. I really like the looks of this. I'm normally not a skull guy, but I think this one's really tasteful. My wife told me a long time ago that this is a tough clip, and I'm flabby. So if I lose 50 pounds, I can get a Chavez. I still haven't lost them, and I still don't have a Chavez. So maybe I just got to get get my rear in gear and solve this problem. But in the meantime, you can pick up a scapegoat at Blade HQ right now. Those are going for 300 even. Next up from CJRB, we have some new Hectare models that have a bunch of interesting colorways. This one's the black and yellow, kind of reminded me of the Wu-Tang Clan, so I picked it because why not? But they have some like blue and purple options and all that. But seriously, the Hectare is a great knife. You can kind of see some bug out-esque lines in it, and I really do appreciate that style of design. But the important thing here is we have a thumb hole instead of a thumb stud. So, I'll do it this way. So if you're gonna use this, you're not gonna have a thumb stud that's gonna run into something. If you're like cutting an apple, you're not gonna be digging a thumb stud into it. So some people may appreciate that. And I think that this is more of a, I like to use it more of the gravity style knife. I suppose you can kind of flick it if you want, but I do like the Hectare, and I love all these new colors. I will say these new colorways are selling fast. In fact, they might even be sold out now. So if you like these, I'd head over to Blade HQ sooner than later and pick up your favorite Hectare, especially for their incredible price, $47.95. Guys, it is amazing to be in a knife nerd right now because for 50 bucks, you're getting a crossbar lock. I want to say ARRPM9. Yeah, so this is a powder steel, crossbar, mill G10, full steel liners. I'm telling you, materials like this, 10 years ago would have cost you, I don't know, 100 and 120 bucks. Today, 50 bucks! Man, I love everything. Okay, next up from Artisan, we have a Seder. So we've seen the Seder before, so we won't talk too much about it. Just a nice, full-sized, usable EDC knife. And normally it's a titanium frame all the way around with a titanium scale. However, they have this micarta one. And what I love about this micarta is it is raw. So sometimes when they make micarta overseas, as China makes the artisan, they'll really impregnate it with oils so that when it ships, it doesn't warp, which is really nice. However, they used a very premium micarta here, and then you can't quite see it, but underneath here, there's a steel liner reinforcing it. So it's not gonna bend at all, and you're gonna get the raw stuff that you can patina all your own. This is a great knife, S90V, going for $199. Man, I do like this Seder. This one's Dallas's Seder. He has a few of them. I keep telling him, you cannot have two of what your friend has none of. And he says, oh, but sure I can. My neighbor with, a cor with multiple Corvettes always said the same thing. Anyway, next up from Zero Tolerance, we have the 0450, and this is a special version. We've got red backspacers on this beautiful fat carbon inlay. I don't know what color this would be. I know there's Lava Flow and Mars Valley. I don't know which one this is. This one's got the orange and the red, and then this Damascus blade. And sometimes Damascus blades, especially on production knives like this, tend to have a random pattern. And I do love me a random pattern, but sometimes it's fun to see something like this where it's just a refined texture just straight from 
hilt to tip. It, I think it looks really nice and it sort of lends to that and that way you're getting the, um, the, the complex and unpredictable pattern of the carbon fiber but then still the premium touch of Damascus all while maintaining a nice flowy appearance. I very much like that. Some people like the random on random and we have a knife for you guys. I'll give you a little sneak peek of it right here. That one's that theory we're going to talk about here in a minute. Next up we have the CRKT Soldatna. So this is a Russ Comer design. He's designed a few of their knives. Most of them have rings on them, like the Bear Claw was a Russ Comer design. Looks like we got some sheath and stuff here. We're trying to keep these as close to new in box as possible. This is made by Topps Knives, and Topps is known for their 1095 steel, which is a carbon steel. So oftentimes with carbon steels, you'll get them and they'll come kind of greasy, and that's because they don't want it to rust in the sheath or in transit. It's to protect the knife, just wipe it off and you'll be good to go, but it's brand new underneath it. So that's what you're seeing here. But the Soldatna, is right up my alley. Nice and thin, but a tough steel, so you know you can handle some stuff. A nice, a, a good handle that wants to sit in your palm. I've talked about this especially with the Benjamin 940. In fact, I think I'm carrying mine today. Sometimes with these slim knives, they want to sit in your fingers, but some of, sometimes, I don't know how these designers do it, they want to sit in your palm. And they really did that well here. This knife wants to be in your palm, even though it's a really slim knife. Great ergonomics, it's not gonna tire you out holding it. Very nicely done. This one goes for 200 USA made with this very premium full grain leather sheath and this brass post snap thing. All you leather workers out there know what this thing's called. I don't know what it's called, but you just put this loop through it and it holds the knife in nice and tight. It's a little bit hard to do it to start with, but as the knife breaks in with time, it will get easier. And I'd rather it be hard to start with and then still retain the knife in 10 years. Next up from Arc Form, we have the new Theories. So we've seen the theory a lot before, but the, this one is special because we have these carbon fiber inlays. And I don't know exactly what this one's called. I kind of like how it's a minimal thing where you get these little pockets with this gold edge. And then we also have the purple haze, and we do love us some purple haze. And these ones come with these damascus steel blades, stainless Damascus that's been etched. And it is like mirror polished in those high points. Very pretty, a very complicated knife, and a very expensive looking knife. And honestly, for $490, I don't know that you could, I don't know that you could really trim the costs any more than that for a knife of this quality, but it, this thing looks like a thousand dollar knife to me, and it feels like one too. They did a really good job. However, if you do like these scales, but would prefer just the traditional M390 blade, those are available as well. Those go for $335. But yeah, Arc Form's doing a really great job with these. I just love the whole theory lineup. I have one, I have the black and gray one. It's a great knife. I like it a lot. I especially like the way they flare the handle. So back here, some people will credit this design choice to Mick Strider. I don't know if it was him that came up with it, but you also you often see a really wide back here. And I like that a little bit, but not too much. And I think they dialed it in just perfectly for this one. Very nicely done Arc Form. Next up, new from Tour Knives, we have the Jankshank S. So I love the Jankshank. I have one. I have the old one. They used to come with a 154 cm blade and be really thick and have a worn cliff on them. However, now we have a much thinner blade and the drop point profile on a CPM M4 blade. I love that upgrade from that 154 cm. At least it's an upgrade in my opinion. You are going to lose a lot of stain resistance there, but you're going to get it back in toughness and toughness and edge retention. It's going to be a great knife. And I can see this as like an everyday carry fixed blade. That'll open boxes, that'll cut packaging, like all that good stuff. Might be a little thick for slicing apples, but that's okay. But it's still, it's still a tour jank shank. It still wants to stab stuff. So they did a good job here. Love the M4. Kind of have this G10 with a gray liner on there. Nice little touch. Keeps it slim, cool, tactical, but also a little bit of fun. It's fun to look at. And if it's not cool to look at, like we, we all eat first with our eyes, make sure your knives look cool, man. <laughs> what do you, you got to say? Those are going for, sorry, there's a lot of knives on this paper. Those are going for 250. Next up, we have the new NAFS Lander 3. So for those of you who have been following the Lander series, it started out with one made by QSP that had, I want to say a D2 blade, G10, and a liner lock. And then there was the Lander 2, which was made by Kaiser and had their clutch lock which for those of you who don't know, the clutch lock is really cool. It's an adjustable spring tension crossbar lock. If you like it stiff, you can have it stiff. If you like it not super bad, you can have it that way. 
then you just have to pop these scales off and adjust that spring in there. Now, that means that they're welcoming you to open the knife. Like, pull, this, pull the scales off and adjust it, and that is the Ben Peterson way. He designed the Lander series to have adjustable scales, and they are, excuse me, exchangeable scales, and it's open source. So if you've got a 3D printer or a CNC machine or just want to make something up and then have it ordered in, you can do that and make your knife however you want to. The Lander 3 has all those same features, however, it takes the blade steel, which I believe is S35VN, and the clutch lock, and it brings it back down to the size of the Lander 1. And I'll tell you, this is my favorite Lander to date. Very nicely done, and I love this pocket clip. This is one of my favorite things that I wish every knife had. Recessed pocket clip, recessed screws. Clean and smooth all the way into your pocket. Very nicely done indeed. And then we have the gray handled version as well, but once again, don't take these handles as gospel. There's a million different things going on here, and you'll be able to make a handle whatever you like. Next up on the big side, we have the Fox Knives Oxalos. And this knife, it just feels good. They did a handle that's really nice, and I love how they made this micarta extend up into where this choil area is. Oftentimes when you choke up on a fixed blade, between your finger and your thumb, all you have is steel. But here you have some nice micarta in there. See my finger lands on there. Gives you a really good grip all the way around. Nice indeed. I do like this knife. It's big, it's beefy, it's made of B-cut steel, which is a stain-resistant steel. Think of it akin to D2 with just a little bit extra toughness. I do, do love it. And then this leather sheath is outfitted from the factory for horizontal carry. And I hear you say, well, is it for right-handed or left-handed horizontal carry? And the answer is both. You got a snap on this side, and I believe you have a snap on this side as well. So no matter how you like to carry your knife, you're gonna be able to do it. So lefties, righties, rejoice. This is a great sheath for you. And these ones go for 175. Next up from Bastinelli, we have the Chopper. So I've been following Bastion Coves a little bit recently. He likes to show off his knives in their extreme cutting power on his channel. Go check out Bastinelli on Instagram and you'll see it. But what I like is he takes his tactical knives a bit of a different direction. They're a bit sleeker, slimmer, faster, dare I say. And look how thin this blade is, made of M390. Uh, this G10 handle is super textured, but slim. Like this thing is maybe a third of an inch thick. It's nice and, th nice and thin, but it still locks in the hand really nice and gives you a lot of slicing potential. I don't know the first thing about edged combat, so I won't tell you that I do, but I do know that this knife is cool from a straight up knife perspective. And I could see this being a hunting knife even. Look how deep and slicey that belly is, or maybe even a kitchen knife. Man, he did a good job. And what I love is the sheath. So oftentimes with a Kydex sheath, it's gonna hug the knife pretty high up to make sure you get a positive retention. But look at this, that is just barely grabbing right there. Just dink. And it is, it's in there, it's in there solid. It's not going anywhere, no rattle, no nothing. When you need it, you grab it as you naturally would and you are all the way to the front of the handle. No, no repositioning. And I imagine if you are using your knife in a self-defense capacity, seconds, seconds means life or death and tenths of seconds is what means the difference between you getting an upper hand. And this makes sure that you do not have to spend a fraction of a second repositioning your grip once it's out of the Kydex sheath. Very nicely done, Bastinelli. Next up, we have one of our new brands, Rough Rider. So Rough Rider, we may have seen around the knife community a little bit before. They make traditional knives. That's, that's their jam, but they make them in a very special way. So a lot of traditional knife patterns have gone by the wayside and been replaced by modern tools. And one of those is like the scout knife. This is a very old school thing that Cub Scouts used to have. I used to have one. It was technically my first knife, but I don't count it because my brother got it confiscated at a jazz game two weeks later. But this thing's really cool because it has the bottle opener, the can opener. And then on this side, we have an awl and we have a blade. These were traditional. However, Swiss Army knives came along and kind of booted them. And then after that, multi-tools. And these sort of fell by the wayside. So Victorinox doesn't make them anymore. Case doesn't make them anymore. But Rough Rider, what I love about Rough Rider is they take all of these weird patterns that we haven't seen in decades and they make them back and they make them as good as ever. We got a nice 440A stainless steel blade here. So you're not gonna get titanic edge retention, but it's gonna hold up pretty well. And then we also have bone, nickel silver bolsters. Rough Rider does a good job. And for its price, guys, $17 getting you this old school tool and all the other patterns that you'd never see, you can have now because of Rough Rider. Love Rough Rider. 
Next up from Best Tech, we have the Best Techman Mini Dundee. This one's a new one with this red G10 handle. And it's G10 is like a looser weave, so it has a bit more visual texture to it, which I think is fun. I always thought the Mini Dundee was a bit of a looker. It looks nice, has a nice slim blade. It's an EDC knife through and through that is good to look at. And I like how they're taking this textural approach to it, but still keeping it at a very affordable price. $42.90, very good deal. Deep carry pocket clip and uh, D2 on the blade, sorry. There's a lot of 14C28 ends swimming around now and I'm not sure which blades have switched and all that. I do like this one a lot. I would carry this knife. I think I might grab a Micarta one. We still have those on the website as well. So check out all of your favorite mini Dundees at bladehq.com. And lastly, we have a bunch of new ProTech arriving, including a bunch of stuff from the New York Custom Knife Show. And ProTech loves them some shows and they love them some customs. And they always show up to these shows with the coolest stuff. So if you want to get a really limited run ProTech, I recommend finding them at a trade show. And I'd bet the farm there's one within driving distance of you that they will be at. This one's super cool because it's got this jigged bone handle. And jig bone is something that's kind of reserved for traditionals most of the time. But here we have it on a Bob Terzuola designed ProTech made tactical auto magna cut blade. Man, what a mashup of traditions. This particular knife goes for 560, but you'll find all of the cool new ProTechs available in the ProTech category at bladehq.com. Anyway, everybody, I'm getting thirsty. This has been a very long video of new knives. I hope you've enjoyed it and we'll see you next week.